Hello, hello, hello. What is happening today? Today we are on the conversation with Stevie. I am Dr. Stevie Aisha Mills, and I absolutely love having conversations with powerful people. So listen, this is the show that is all about the why behind the what of what people do. And today we are going to be talking to the absolutely fabulous, amazing Tiffany Fox. Hey, Tiffany, how are you doing? Hey, hey, I'm great. How are you? Doing great today. Thank you so, so much. So go ahead and tell us who you are. I believe the best introduction one can do is of themselves. All right. I am Tiffany Fox, your healing coach. I am CEO of Tiffany Fox Inc., which is my coaching um, and consulting firm. And my goal is to get women out of survival mode, get them out of those um, unstuck places, out of autopilot, and get them started on their healing journey, moving to healing and wholeness. Awesome. Awesome. So I love that. I love that. I've been able to work with you and you definitely have helped me to shift from a difficult place you know when we started working together my father had just passed away i was looking trying to figure out what in the world how do i heal from this this is one of the biggest hurts i ever experienced in my life and i can definitely attest to the great work that you do i want to ask you of course what is your why behind the what of what you do what made you just start helping people to heal I have um, always, I'm by trade, I'm a nurse. So I love helping people. It's, it's in my DNA. Um, but doing my healing work, um, because I'm my own prototype, right? I'm not, I'm not out here promoting anything that I haven't done myself. In doing my work, I realized there are so many women um, that look like you and I. There are so many mothers. There are so many wives that are just on the outside. It, they look like they have it together. But on the inside, there's a struggle. On the inside, you're meeting their representatives, right? On the inside, they're not tapped into life. They're not thriving. They're not living. And so I went ahead and decided to branch out and do the coaching because I know women need these services and need the tools so they can come out of survival mode and start thriving in life and really showing up for them. I love it. I love it. Specifically now, you know, we've seen the headlines, we've seen the things that people have it all together. It's not new, right? It's not new. For one, we know that nothing is new under the sun. But for two, we've seen all kinds of cases of depression, mental illness, um, all kinds of things. I know you know more than me. I just know from what I've seen on the news, but you know firsthand. And it's just heartbreaking, right? Yes. Yes. It's heartbreaking to see that. I remember when I first saw that Robin Williams had committed suicide. That broke me because I'm like, how can this man who seemingly has it all together do this? Like, right. that, I was in shock. And I'm like, what about your friends? And how do you deal with that? So let's talk about the strong friend, right? Because yes. I know that we've talked about that before. But what are some of the things that we can look out for when it comes to helping our strong friend heal? Absolutely. So one, let's let's go back and talk about mental health. So all mental health is, is your emotions, your thoughts, and your behaviors. And what happens is in our society, in our culture, the stigma around mental health is we don't talk about our thoughts. We don't talk about our feelings and we don't talk about our behaviors, right? And so those things get ignored. Um, you know, anytime any of those three areas are off, that doesn't mean we have a mental illness as far as a diagnosis. That just means we're having an off day, but no one wants to talk about it. No one wants to share. No one wants to feel crazy. No one wants to feel judged. And so what happens is we just are silent. And so our strong friends have the extra burden on not only trying to take care of their thoughts, their behaviors, and their emotions, but they're taking on everybody else's. And so um, we have to check on the strong people in our life because the strong people won't tell you that, you know, um, I don't want to be strong today. They need permission not to be strong. They need someone to say, hey, you don't have to have it all together, or I'm just checking on you, or how are you today, and really sitting and listening to how the person is doing, because we'll say, how are you doing, and keep it moving, you know, because that's just like a form of 
a greeting nowadays, but when you really sit and listen to someone to say how they're doing, that's half the battle. Are you really going to hear how I'm doing? Are you really interested in the things that are bothering me, the things that are on my heart? You know, and you don't have to have the right answers. And I think we think we have to say the right thing or we have to have all the answers. It's just listening. You know, sometimes just getting your thoughts out of your out of your head, whether it's on paper or just being able to talk does wonders. So for for the healing for the strong friends, we need and I say we, we need permission to um, not to be okay today or not to have it all together or not to have to wear the mask today or not to have to send the representative. When we know people have our back like that, it makes it easier to kind of deal with what's in front of us. What would you say you specifically specialize in helping people through? right? Because it's a through place. I think we all have to get through to go through. And what is your through expertise? My through expertise is uh, trauma. My through expertise is heartbreak. My through expertise is abandonment. Uh, We've added grief um, now. Um, Prior to, again, you know, um, I don't talk about or do anything that I haven't done my work. And prior to a year ago, um, you know, my mom passed last June. And so I had to deal with a whole healing journey myself that I'm, I'm willing to share and, and help others. So now grief, um, abuse. Um, so the things that really keep us stuck, keep us stuck in self-doubt, keep us stuck in not showing up, keep us stuck um, in not feeling like we're good enough. So those, those things. Um, now, I will say, if we have to move to a place where, um, because we go back to go forward, but there are some people that need to stay back for a minute. If we need that, then we'll bring kind of a therapist in and we'll partner you know, with, with a therapist to help you because we want to go back just enough, find the root, pluck the root, and we want to move forward, right? But some people need to stay back because they need to, you know, deal with deal with a lot of theirs. So that's where I kind of bring in a therapist um, or a counselor to kind of deal with um, if we have to stay stuck back. But pretty much, you know, anything that is causing guilt, um, shame, you know, anything that's keeping you kind of in autopilot, disconnected from life. Ooh, let's talk about what you just said, that autopilot right? Yes. How do we know if we are on autopilot? Because if we're, I feel like if we're on autopilot, we don't really cogn- cognitively know <laughs> that we're there. We all know that. We feel like we're going through the motions. We're on the hamster wheel. This is life. What you talking about? Tiffany, I know, <laughs> you know, for me, I had to really come to Jesus one day um, during this work that we've done together because I'm like, what? my whole life I could see my life that it used to be but it was hard to accept the life that is so when you're an autopilot how do you know um so 75 percent of the women I work with they don't know they don't know until I introduce them but they know that something isn't right they know they want more they know this can't be life they know that you know all I do is get up you know get the kids ready go to work I have my schedule but I can't wait to get home and get in the bed that's all. That's all. I'm just surviving today. I just need to get through this hour, right? You're not enjoying anything. Um, you're going through the motions, but there's no pleasure. You know, you're just doing what you have to do. I'm just raising these kids. I'm just in this marriage. I'm just in this relationship. I'm just at this job, right? Because this is what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm sending my representative. You know, I'm short. I have, you know, short temper. Um, I have an attitude. I have a chip. I always throw shade. Uh, you know, like everything, I find something wrong with everything. The other part is I, I, I can't say no. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the people pleaser. I've got to be accessible and available for everyone. I have to be all things. Um, another thing we say is there's not enough hours in a day. Well, there is right? We all get the same 24, right? But what are you, do you have the mentality? If I don't do it, it won't get done. Are you just taking on the weight of the world? So that's autopilot, just going through life, trying to get to the next task, to the next day, to the next, you know, um, I can't wait to get back in bed, you know, and I hate to start it all over again. So you're just existing. 
That's good. And I was silent for a moment because I want people to sink that in because it's so powerful. Specifically, you know, a lot of people who listen to this are entrepreneurs. So to me, as an entrepreneur sitting in what you just said, I'm like, get the next task done. And that's what we do. That's, what we <laughs> that's, do, right? that's yeah. what we're doing. So it's like, do this task, that task, this task, that task. And so the question I have for you is when does that go from, because Completing tasks seemingly is a healthy thing to do, right? Correct. When does that go from healthy to not so healthy? When we're not enjoying it. So, you know, you got to tap into why did I start the business, right? You got to remember that, right? The, the tasks, right, are going to come. But we have to not be in autopilot and enjoy those things. And maybe we need to shift our plate so we can enjoy them. You know, I used to have a to-do list of 20 things, really, right? Color-coded, highlighted, you know, <laughs> of things. And that would be to do a day. Right. I now have four things on my to do list. What are my top three things that I need to get done today? Because the work will always be there. As an entrepreneur, you know, the work will be there at two in the morning, at 2 p.m. It's always something to do. Right. Even when you have a team, it is always something to do. But I started to do top three things in business that I need to get done. And that fourth thing that I put myself on my to do list every day. So I check on me, just like I check on Instagram, just like I check on my emails. You know, how are you? What do you need today? You know, do you need to take a break and just read for a minute? Do you need to go for a walk? So I am on my to-do list every day so I can check in with me. Um, and, and, that, and then when I get those three things done, I feel accomplished. Running behind the eight ball, the rat race with those 20 things, I never felt accomplished. I always felt like I was behind. I always felt like, you know, it's not enough hours in the day. Um, you know, I always felt like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm drowning. But once I add those three things, and I'm not saying you can't do more, but what I'm saying is add those three things, four, including yourself, get those done, and then see how much energy and momentum you have to do the next thing, or we're going to schedule it for the next day. So I always tell people to find the courage and confidence they need to find their ideal life, right? Yeah. And so in that, because what you're talking about, Tiffany, takes courage and confidence. <laughs> it does. It does. So how did you find this courage and confidence? I, being an autopilot, I, um, because my ideal life, let me stop, my ideal life uh, was to be an entrepreneur for time freedom. You know, it wasn't even about the money. It was about the time freedom. I wanted to be there for everything for my husband and my children and my family, you know, so it was the time freedom. However, you know, I would watch movies with my laptop. You know, I'm at the, the, the game with the phone, you know, and I really had to ask my family, you know, um, how am I doing? You know, and they prefer that I work at eight to five or a schedule from eight to five versus being flexible um, because they're not getting all of me. If it means getting all of you for two hours, mom, I'd rather the two hours and you sit in our face and not being. And that hurt because I schedule everything so I can be here. But the reality was I wasn't. And so my goal was kind of working against me. And so I was like, you know what? I have to get a handle on this. I have to be present. You know, I have to be, because what happens is, and I know some of you can, can feel me, I can be present and I got the social cues and the head nods and I'm smiling. You think I'm there, but I'm thinking about what I have to do tomorrow, what report is due, what we eat and for dinner. I'm just completely checked out. And so I had to reframe my mind and restructure my mind to be present be in this moment enjoy this moment you may not get the next and so also the pandemic helped with that too because all the systems that we relied on I had to pivot right and so life as I knew it entrepreneurship as I knew it had to had had to be different but my family and being present with my family was most important you know to me so it does it does take a lot of courage and confidence but it takes a lot of self-awareness too where are you what do you want and are you fully present because we, we could want the big house, the nice cars, the socialite life, but are you going to be present or are you going to send your representative to those things too? <laughs> I always ask everyone who comes to have a conversation with me this question, and it's a fill in the blank question, and it goes like this. Dr. Stevie, we cannot leave the conversation today without everyone knowing, and then fill in the blank. 
All right. My fill in the blank would be your mental health is just as important as your physical health. Your mental health, your thoughts, your emotions, your behaviors, we have to tend to and take care of those things if we're going to um, have success, if we're going to have entrepreneurship, if we're going to stick and stay around for our families. So we have to, have to, have to take care of and prioritize our mental health, no different than we would our heart health, you know, um, any, any type of other diabetes or any cancer, any of those things we would tend to and seek treatment for, we need to make sure we prioritize our mental health. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, definitely before you leave, we gotta get your contact information. Absolutely. So you can find me on Facebook at Tiffany Fox Inc. That's T-I-F-F-A-N-Y-F-O-X-I-N-C. You can find me at uh, Instagram, Tiffany Fox Inc. My website is TiffanyFoxInc.com. You can go ahead and, and catch me there and, and, and schedule a uh, discovery call, look at all the products and services and programs, you know, we offer. Um, and my personal email for my business email is tfox at TiffanyFoxInc.com. I would love to connect awesome y'all heard it y'all better get with tiffany trust me i got with tiffany and my whole life was better for it so you all better get with her too again i am dr stevie aisha mills if you need me just go to workwithstevie.com workwithstevie.com and you know my name is spelled with two eyes at the end so i always tell people to make it a great day don't have a great day make it a great day why? Because you, 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 and yes, you too have the power to do so. Bye for now.